Okay, I'm going to continue on with your trash kit ball review. Number eight, it says, what is the quotient of 6.24 times 10 to the seventh and 1.2 times 10 to the third? You have to write your answer in scientific notation. Okay, so if they're asking about the quotient, quotient tells us we have to divide. So we have 6.24 times 10 to the seventh divide it by 1.2 times 10 to the third. Okay, I'm going to do my base of 10 first because that's easier. So when we're dividing and we have the same base, we keep the base and we subtract those exponents. So that's what I'm going to do for that piece of it. I'm going to keep the base and subtract the exponents. Now my other part, I actually have to divide out. So we're going to take 6.24 and divide that by 1.2. So if I'm going to divide by 1.2, I have to actually have to move that decimal one to the right, so I have to move this decimal one to the right. So what I'm really doing is 12 into 62.4. How many times is 12 going to 62? Five times. Five times 12 is 60. Subtract off. You got a two, drag down the four. How many times is 12 going to 24? Twice. And there you have it, 5.2. So this must be 5.2 times 10 to the fourth. 5.2 times 10 to the fourth. So that's number eight. Nine. It says the mass of the earth is approximately 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. The mass of Saturn is about 300 times the mass of the earth. What is the approximate mass of Saturn in scientific notation? So it's 300 times greater than the Earth. So we have to take our 5.98 times 10 to the 24th and multiply that by 300. So that's 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. We're going to multiply that. I'm going to rewrite this in scientific notation. Move that decimal point over two places, so that's 3 times 10 to the second, right? 300 is 3 times 100, or 3 times 10 to the second. Now I can go ahead and just multiply my first factors. So I have 5.98 times 3. 3 times 8 is 24, put down a 4, carry a 2. 3 times 9 is 27, 28, 29, put down a 9, carry a 2. 3 times 5 is 15, and 2 more is 17. Decimal over 2 places, decimal over 2 places, okay. So that's 17.94 times 10 to the, when I'm multiplying, I have to add my exponents. So 24 plus 2, because you're multiplying, you keep the base and you add those exponents. 24 plus 2 is 26. All right. But I have to rewrite my answer in scientific notation. So anytime I'm given a number close to scientific notation, but I have to do a rewrite, I always write down Lars for myself. That way I know if I'm going to the left, I need to add. So I have to go to the left one, which means I'll add one here. So that's 1.794 times 10 to the 27th. This one's not in scientific notation. 1.794 times 10 to the 27th. So there we have it. Let's just keep going. All right. Which of the following describes the results result of this number? Well, let's figure out what this would be. 2 to the negative fourth. Oh, you know what I'm going to actually do? I'm going to use my laws of exponents. If I'm multiplying with the same base, I'm going to keep the base and add my exponents. Negative 4 plus 4. More than one way to look at this, but let's go ahead and use our laws of exponents. Keep the base of 2. When we're multiplying, we add those exponents. Negative 4 plus 4. So we still have our base of 2. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Any number to the 0 power we know is 1. So it's a number equal to 1. All right, let's try 11.
What has the greatest value? Okay, well, first of all, on this example, they're all positives. I know on a CR you had some that were negative, so they didn't have a shot in terms of the first factor. But these are all positive. So for the greatest value, we want the highest exponent. And when we're talking about negative exponents, you just have to make sure you think which is really the highest number. Well, it would be the number closest to zero. Like if you looked here, negative one, negative two, negative three. Negative one is actually a higher number than negative three. Greatest value will have the highest exponent. So negative one is higher than negative three on our exponent, so that doesn't have a shot. But I have a couple of them with negative ones. Negative 2, negative 1 still beats out negative 2 because it's higher, further to the right on the number line. So now I'm between these two numbers because the first thing you have to look at is your exponent on 10 to decide which has the greatest value or they could be asking, you know, for the least value. And then once you have matching exponents on 10, you say, okay, well, which no one of these numbers is greater, 3 or 3.1? Well, 3.1 is one-tenth greater than three. So this number right here is the larger number. The exponents match, and that's the highest exponent given. And then you just have to look at your first factor and say, okay, 3.1 is greater than three. Let's take a look at number 12. A school emails approximately 2.3 times 10 to the sixth emails per month. Of the, the emails made during the month, the math department emails were 1.2 times 10 to the fourth total emails. About how many emails were made by the other departments at the school? So if you know your total is 2.3 times 10 to the sixth, and the math department sent out this many emails, if we go ahead and subtract those numbers, numbers we'll find out how many other emails were sent. So if you take your total, 2.3 times 10 to the 6th, and you subtract off the number that the math department sent, you'll get an answer of how many other emails were sent from other departments. And again, anytime we're adding or subtracting, we have to have our exponents on 10 matching. And you always need to go to the higher exponent. I, you don't have to, it just makes the math of it easier. Your final answer will remain in scientific notation if you move towards the higher exponent. So you say, okay, 6 is the higher exponent, so I want to, to the 4, I need to add 2. If I'm adding 2, that means I have to move this decimal point 2 to the left for our exponents to match. I have to add 2 to this exponent, which means I have to move this 1, 2 to the left. Okay, so really the numbers I'm working with is 2.3 times 10 to the 6th minus 0 0.012 times 10 to the 6th. Now I'm just going to go ahead and subtract my first factors. 2.3 lining up my decimal points minus 0 0.012. So I have to put two zeros after that. Oh gosh, I gotta borrow from the three. Three becomes a two, this becomes a 10. Now I can borrow from this 10, that becomes a nine, which means this becomes a 10. 10 minus two is eight. Nine minus one is eight. Two minus zero is two. Got our decimal point and we got two. So it's gonna be 2.288 times 10 to the, you just keep your exponent of six. So it's letter C. All right, I think there's only one more problem to do. I think we'll fit this in on this video and be done. All right, for this value, for this problem, what you need to do is we're gonna handle this division first, get to a single value here, and then we'll multiply by that. So if we're handling this division first, I know I have to take 3.2 and divide that by 1.6. If I move my decimal point over one, we're saying how many times does 16 go into 32? I'm guessing 16 times 2 is 32. Yep, 16 times 2 is 32. So right here I get 2 times 10 to the, when we divide, this is a division, we need to subtract our exponents. 6 minus 3 is 3. And then we're going to multiply that by 5 times 10 to the negative 3 power. 
So I simplified this first one, got to a single value, and now I'll do my multiplication. 2 times 5 is 10. So that's from this. 2 times 5 is 10. Times 10 to the, I keep my base of 10, and now I'm going to go ahead and add my exponents. So 3 plus negative 3. Guess what 3 plus negative 3 is? It's 0. So this is 10 times 10 to the 0 power. But I need to write my final answer in scientific notation. So I write down my Lars. My decimal point is here. I need to move it 1 to the left. So left add, which means I'll add 1 here. And my final answer will be... 1.0 times 10 to the first. All right, so those are all your review questions, and I'm telling you, if you can handle those review questions, you should be trying them on your own, checking them against what I've done, then you will be ready for that test that you have, I believe, on Tuesday, I'm guessing is the test. I hope that helped.